My organization started uh, in 2011 uh, on a project called uh, Safe Streets Campaign, which was working on this, uh, um, fighting sexual harassment in Yemen. So that's the beginning of the, the project, and then started to be a foundation late, uh, later on at the end of 2013. There was like no one speaking about sexual harassment. It was like a taboo. It's it's impossible to talk about, especially if it's, if you are a woman. But when I started this campaign, I got a lot of uh, of critiques and saying uh, you are giving a bad reputation about Yemeni and Yemeni women and men. So, so this kind of challenge challenges at the beginning. But later on, I started to find that. People started to accept the terminology of sexual harassment because before they said no, it's not sexual harassment, it's just like a little bit bothering the streets. It's not a sexual harassment. But now they, they started to accept the term, this, uh, this terminology, which, which is the beginning of facing this problem. My aim of, of this campaign is to to let people get out from the denial stage that they, when they said there is no se sexual harassment, now people started to believe there is a sexual harassment. So this is the, the first step to fight the problem, to, to let people admit of the problem. And then you can go forward to go to the, uh, to the legal, to, to do um, uh, legal, legal legislations, uh, reforms, or something like that. But at the beginning, let people speak and let people get, uh, break the silence. We are in the, uh, in the process to build a new constitution. So we, we have a plan to work on that, to push for um, constitutional provisions on the constitution against sexual harassment, not just sexual harassment, but even criminalizing violence against women. And sexual harassment and FGM is part of it, a part of it. It's very disappointing to tell you because uh, once we started the national dialogue, uh, we all agreed that uh, at least women has 30% of re their rep representation in all authorities, even with the, in the constitutional drafting committee. But when the uh, constitutional drafting committee formed, we discovered that uh, women uh, on this committee were less than 30%, like they were 23%, much less than we, as we, what we agreed in the national dialogue. So this kind of disappointment, I'm afraid that uh, it could be it it could affect the constitution at the at the at the at the end. I would like to tell these people that uh, that see the population of Yemen. There are half men and half and the other half are women. So when you when you put only men on the on the decisions making, only men. They will take decisions uh, in, in favor of the men only, but who will take on uh, the women? No one. So that's why when we put men and women in the decision-making process, they both uh, serve men and uh, the population, men and women, and that uh, has an impact on the family and then on the whole society.